Right, this is Mr. Palmer. Got another video for you here on uh, computer science. So before you watch this one, make sure you go over your notes on low-level languages. So uh, here we're looking at translators. This one is going to focus on assemblers. So big questions for this video are: Why do you need a translator, and how does an, an assembler actually work? All right. So a quick refresh for those of you who didn't take the time to go over your notes. If you remember, back in the day, programmers used to work in binary. Uh, we then moved on to using assembly language because it is easier to work with and then now we work with high level languages So we've got that increased abstraction moving further and further away from the actual machine code All right, so assembly language basically took an opcode for example the 100101 And then it replaced it with a mnemonic so it became easier to work You weren't working with the opcodes and binary addresses you were just working with like some form of simplified instruction and a very an abstract variable name Okay, but the dilemma there is that the uh, machine basically speaks machine code, right? Binary, whereas we are working in uh, you know some now form of uh, human language, so um, uh, or something closer to human language. So that's Jacob something I forget his name. He's one of the co-founders of Vimeo, all right. And there he is talking and uh, writing his assembler. Okay, on the other side you can see that we've got the machine working in machine code. So we need something that can basically translate from Okay, his uh, assembler to uh, sorry his assembly language. The program is written in assembly to um, machine code. Okay, and that's basically what the tran or, or the an assembler does. Okay, an assembler is one form of translator, and it translates assembly language into machine code. So something that we can understand into something a computer can understand. All right. So uh, basically, whoa, this is a weird animation. All right, uh, you've got your source code. That gets fed into a translator, which then creates machine code. All right. This diagram is the basic version of the diagram, and as we move on and we learn about the different forms of translator, you will see the machine. It will get more and more complex, and you might even want to label it up further with more bits and pieces to explain what's going on. All right. So the first type of uh, translator then here is an assembler. Okay. And the tasks performed by an assembler basically are that they convert mnemonics into opcodes. So you'll add, store, load, whatever it is, into a binary opcode. It takes a symbolic address, e.g. num1, num2, x, y, that identifies you've given to your, your data, the, your variables, okay? It takes those symbolic addresses and it converts them into memory locations, all right? And finally, it takes your constants and it converts your constants into um, a binary form. So any decimal number, integer, any uh, hex code that you might have, any text, uh, textual um, data, where, for example, in ASCII would be converted to its numeric format in binary. Okay. Once all of that's put together, you've then got the machine code that can be executed on a particular um, CPU. All right. Remember that different CPU architectures have different instruction sets, and so therefore they would have their own translator that will create machine code that they can run. All right. Uh, just to go back over the, to add something else to this as well, you can also have a process of cross compilation, right? Where you have a um, uh, uh, a translator, okay, an assembler on uh, on an Intel x86 platform, and that will create some code, machine code that will run on a, like a Motorola, whatever processor, okay. There's uh, there are software tools that can that can do that, all right. And those of you who twigged it, obviously translators are software. Okay, so the big questions are why do you need a translator? So you should be able to think back and think about the fact that um, uh, machine speak machine code. We are writing in some form of higher level language. Uh, sorry, well not high level assembly. Assembly is a low level language, but we are writing in something that's easy for us to understand. So we need to translate that uh, easy human readable program into something that a computer can execute. And how does an assembler work? It's there in your notes. It should be. All right, about it's translating the opcodes, it's translating the symbolic addresses, and it's doing the conversions on um, uh, the uh, constants. Okay, uh, watch out for the next video, and that one's going to be continuing on the theme of translators looking at interpreters and compilers.